Just to keep his job. She was like having a bad day that day, and I'm just saying I caught the brunt of it because I really, honest to God, wasn't rude. I need three glasses, all with ice, please. And BJ's shaken but not stirred. Make it snappy, make it snappy, come on. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. If you can use some exotic booze on a far-flung holiday. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. The summer is almost over for likely lads and novice stewards Jason and Aaron, who are enjoying a stopover in the Dominican Republic. This is nice, mate. This is it's slightly nicer uh, than um, Barbados, except for in Barbados there's more single women than there are here. Yeah. Everyone this is, is getting married or couples, got married. Yeah, or honeymoon. I think they're going for donkey's years. We we'll recommend it to the lads. It's not a lads' holiday, but it's Definitely certainly not. a nice holiday. Yeah. When they get back, they'll find out if Britannia plans to keep them on. So they've got one last chance to prove themselves. They've just put some those savory snacks in like they're... Who's done it? Um, John Glasper, but in the same, in the, like the life jackets, when they're gonna open them up and put them on, all the savory Who? things will fall out. Jason doesn't realize his seatbelt has also been booby-trapped. And adjust like this, and unfastens like this. Your life jacket is kept in a pocket under your seat. If it's needed, take it out of its container and put it over your head. Wrap the tape around your waist, bring them to the side, and tie them securely in a double bow. To inflate the life jacket, pull the red toggle sharply downward. Ladies and gentlemen, your seatbelt should now be fastened to your take off. Before we make a final check of the cabin, please fold away your table and put your seat back upright with the armrest down. Cheers, mate. Wow. Thanks for that. Wow. Thanks for that. Oh, yeah. What happened? Did you see the state of the passenger? Oh, Biscuits oh, everywhere, all over her hair, Never. all over the carpet, all on her husband. You're joking. What tells? This is our first long haul trip. So basically, what I've done to help us along the way, because otherwise, because we're new, they'd be looking for us to make mistakes and they'd be picking up on it and taking the piss. So I've drawn up a little uh, a guide. Tells me and Jason basically where we're working from. On our boarding zones, the meal service, the second meal service. Basically, it's got everything that we need to be doing on there. There's right, a copy from me and a copy from him, so as we uh, can look like we know what we're doing, rather than looking silly and like, ooh. <laughs> Halfway across the world, and the night shift at Manchester Airport has a problem. Another family is about to come a cropper over their passport. What we'd have to do is speak to Special Branch right. and they're going to send somebody through to have a word with me. Um, what could happen if we send you on this, the airline could be fined and basically it could be anybody that's just written a child onto your passport. Right. So um, I'd suggest that if you can get the birth certificate here, that would be a great help. We've written in James's name and the passport, the son's name in it. We did it last year. We flew with it last year, and it was all right. I've just spoken to Britannia again. She's actually going to phone the head office in Luton and see what they've got to say, but we do have to speak to Special Branch as well. Right. OK, so yeah. basically we've just got to wait for somebody to come. We were just thinking if somebody could fax one through, would that help? See, I work at Chesterfield Hospital. Right. And oh, so I can see. get to a fax machine there. Yeah. A uh, gentleman's just suggested if somebody could possibly fax the child's birth certificate through. I know it's not the original, but would that be acceptable? It would. All right, then. Thanks a lot. Ian Summers has just one hour to get the birth certificate. The family's £500 holiday to Spain is at stake. It's the late night flight from Ibiza, and Chief Steward BJ Aldridge has got some thirsty passengers. Uh, we've decided, as it's such a short flight time, sir, and most people want to buy. Excuse me? No uh, We want to do duty free goods instead of drinks. You know, it was just his attitude. You know, so I said, I'll serve you a drink, no big deal. I said, let's not make a fuss. Well, unfortunately, the first person that I spoke to said, um, aren't you doing drinks? I said, well, we've decided against it, so, because we want you to free, you know, we want to sell duty free goods. And he said, we don't want to buy any duty free goods. So I said, well, if, you, if you're that desperate, I'll, I'll get you a drink. So he said, well, yes, I would like a drink. So I said, well, don't make a fuss. You know, I'll serve you. You know, it's not a problem, no big deal. But it was just the way, you know, he got a bit funny. So I thought, best I serve him. Anyway, I've got more to do now. 
suddenly it drinks all round. Connie and Coach, next one, Southern Comfort. Whiskey and joy with ice. Yeah. I'll be back in a sec. Hello, is that there, please? You see him? Can you get that, please? Hello, we've got a bit of a problem here at the airport. This passport isn't um, filled in properly. And what they're saying is they need a copy of James's birth certificate to prove that he's our son. Is there any way you can get to Louise's mother to, to get the key off Louise's mother to go into our house, into the bureau, and you know that folder that we have in the bureau? But you know where the bureau is in the front room? There's a folder in there, and under B or C for birth certificate, James's birth certificate's there. Now we need that birth certificate then, faxing, faxing, well, you'll be able to fax it from Chesterfield Royal Hospital. At last, it looks like things are falling into place for the Summers family. The special branch have just come back to me and they're quite happy. They've done, yeah, they've done all the checks and... Well, I've sorted. So my dad's got to get the information down to the hospital. The hospital's got to get the information down to the fax machine. And then from there, they're going to fax it down here. So it should be about half an hour, hopefully. Lemonade and a glass of ice water, the sparkling water, just ordinary. See, what it is, is they, they take out two drinks and two more people say, oh, look, they've got a drink, quick, let's get one ourselves. Yeah. So then they have a drink as well. But that's why it's just the rear cabin, so nobody at the front knows what we're doing. Exactly. <laughs> well, one person asked, and he was very rude, so I, I had to serve him. And then, of course, all the people around him said, oh, we'll do a drink as well, but they were really nice. And I didn't mind doing that. But then everybody else wanted to drink as well, so like, we there was only two of us doing tea and coffee, the rest were doing drinks. Oh, can I think? Yep, yeah. all right, darling, cheers. Um, right, we're just doing top-ups. Although Special Branch has given the OK, Britannia are still nervous about letting the Summers family fly. What, what the problem is, you see, because that's not, it's, you know, you've written on the passport, Immigration in Girona could decide to just send you back and might not let you in, and that's the problem, and then the airline would be fined. You've defaced an official document, which sounds serious, serious, <laughs> you know, but that's what they're saying. And I've spoken to an, um, what they call an ops superintendent in Luton, who I've asked, can he try and, you know, take it a little bit further still and see if, you know, anyone will let this one go. So we're doing as much as we can. Thank you. With minutes to go before the flight, Pat Baines rings HQ for a final answer. He said no. Right. So Vic said no as well. Right, OK. All right, my love, thank you. Bye. No, I'm sorry, they won't. Oh, so what does that mean, then? Well, I can't let you travel this evening, no. Because they said they said you've defaced an official document, and that you know that's just not allowed, unfortunately. I can't let you travel. I suppose they've done all they can do, haven't they? But you know, at the end of the day, we're not going anywhere, are we? And just pretending there's not letting us go anywhere. But that's it, isn't it? That's that's what we're lumbered with. At Luton Airport, a reception committee is waiting for some very important passengers. The England football team has just held Italy nil-nil to qualify for the World Cup. They're coming home on Britannia. David Beckham, last time he came down here, I sang to him. I <laughs> sang, <laughs> Mama, I love you, Mama. <laughs> it's just a good job I can sing. Also in attendance, David Beckham's number one fan. He's supposed to be engaged, but um, that's not true because Victoria was on the Big Breakfast a couple of days ago and she said that she wasn't getting married. Still a hate. Yep. Still a hate. Yeah. Big hope. <laughs> when they come through those doors, all the nation <coughs> will gel as one. And we're, all we're representing the entire nation. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. As the party atmosphere builds up in Luton, the Summers family aren't going anywhere. Despite the convoluted efforts of Britannia, Special Branch, Chesterfield Hospital, and Ian Summers' dad. I said something about having to go to the hospital to tell the person not to open the office up to send a fax. No, it's not for me. I'm not happy. I know. 
The family eventually flew out two days later. It's 4 a.m. and a triumphant England football squad has just got in from Rome. It's a hero's welcome. It's been a long night for the crew that flew them back. They've been on their feet for seven hours. The food was fantastic. We had steak and we had a couple of glasses of water. It was a good, was a good night. We ran out of champagne, opened all the bottles. We ran out of lager, ran out of Libra milk, which is their favourite wine. <laughs> it was very nice. The champagne was much better. <laughs> <laughs> Steve McManaman. Oh, how do we soak you? I don't recognise hardly any of them because I don't know the first thing about football. So, I mean, I wasn't being offensive, but I didn't know them. We played at the challenge of their own game by diving, cheating, trying to con the refs, um, wasting time. Um, We've done everything they, that they did. And on the landing, um, Gazza initiated the singing, you know, England, here we come for the cup, you know. So I didn't even put on the landing music because I thought I'd let them do their repertoire. It seemed appropriate. Would you just give us a little look inside your limo? Not really. You can have a little look if you want. Go on. What does it have in there? Oh, you've got TV in there. You've got TV and a radio, but what, more than anything else, it's, uh, it's nice and comfortable. I love you. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. All right. How do you feel? I'm so happy. I really am happy. Oh, well, I'm happy. I love you. I've told him that. I've told him about a hundred times, but never mind. Oh, well. As the season draws to a close, it's D-Day for new boy Aaron. Britannia are ready to tell him if his contract is being renewed. There are no vacancies for the winter season, but will he be asked back next spring? Aaron knows there have been problems. Right, I'm going into the office. I'm in, uh, I'm in deep dodo at the minute. I've been in trouble a fair bit since I got here, and now I've, uh, I've been called in um, again. And I've got to go in now and uh, speak to Julian about it. He is a bit of a charmer, definitely, uh, as I'm sure you're aware. Um, he probably thinks that that will get him through life, but unfortunately, um, with us, that, that won't. You need, you need more than a charm. I'm going to have to flag it up there big time. I'm just going to have to try my best to, to, get, to get kept on next year. He might think that he can get away with things, but, you know, at the end of the day, um, I am his, uh, his manager. And, um, you know, he has to be told. Wish me luck. <laughs> Air Steward Smith did not show on report for 11.15 Hagada. All telephone numbers in the system were tried in order to contact him. However, then what disturbs me more is then, which I spoke to you about last Saturday, Alison, the crewing officer, said that you had a very bad attitude. They called you at, on standby, when you were on standby, at uh, six in the morning. If I was rude, then fair enough, but I really can't, for the life of me, remember anything to do with that phone call that they could have taken as being rude. I spoke to people, like I said last night on the phone, and mm. they said they'd been effing and blinding because they'd been called out, but, you well, know, at that time in the morning, People, you know, it's, it's a well-known fact throughout life. No one's very good in the morning. No, You'd be not. insane if you was to wake up and say, hello, there, you're calling me out, brilliant, ah, oh, thanks very much. Which is fine, but they, they do, but to be honest with you, Aaron, in all the years I've been a manager, I've never had a report that says um, that you weren't interested in the number one or where you were going. For some reason, this woman was going through the menopause or something, she had a she's bad young, day. She's only young, Aaron. She's she's she was early in season, time of the month, whatever, she was, like, having a bad day that day, and I'm just saying I caught the brunt of it because I really... Honest to God, I wasn't rude. Jason has also been called in to discuss his future. Um, it's good news. Right. It's very good news. Um, 
What's going to happen with you is that we're going to be asking you to come back in February. Right, yep. Now, the way that your work performance has been this summer, I'm really, really good in that. But Although he's coming back, Jason will be laid off during the quieter winter season. Um, if we had the place available, I'd love to turn around and offer you a job. OK, yeah, sure, I understand. You should walk out there and feel really pleased with yourself yeah. because, you know, I, personally, I would have loved to have been able to offer you that job because of your work performance, mm. because you have you have done really well this summer. And you've Can I, is there doing. anyone else on my course who will be getting a contract? Are there people on my course? No, 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 no one on my course. No. Oh, that's all right, no. that's pleasing to know. No. You see... I've flown with you, as you know, and yes, you were great on the flights. But you have to be, we have to be reliant on you to be there on time or to be, the, or to be available for duties. That's why we have standbys. And if we don't, because we have to make sure the flights go on time. Um, now, I can't rely on you to do that. And this, this is just the evidence that goes with it. Um, because for some reason, you've, you're excellent on the, you're actually very good on the line when you're on your flights. You've got some very nice assessments. You've also got some, some assessments where they've said, OK, you need a bit more time um, and you weren't aware of certain things. But generally, you've done fine. But what's very disappointing is that you've got these things all relating to being unavailable um, or missing a flight completely. Yeah, you know, like I said, I do, you know, I won't put up an argument when I can see it's heavily stacked against. I do like you. Excellent. Um, good fun, nice person. But I just feel that... Um, I have no other choice but really to lay you off at the end of October. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry I have to say that really, but what choice do I have? Oh, no, I don't, I don't suppose you have any choice, mate. All right, thank you. Okay. Aaron's career at Britannia has lasted just five months. There's nothing in the world I could have done to stop what just happened in that office. I was getting a bullet from, from this morning, from yesterday, and I knew it. And there was no, there's no use crying over spilt milk. I've got the sack. You know, I'll live another day and I'll get another job, but you know, there's no use walking out of here, oh, God, 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 I'm just going to go and play golf now. Kathy Duffy has spent the last 17 years dealing with problems at Manchester Airport. Today, she's got some bad news for a passenger who's already boarded the plane. Home, yeah. She can't take off, yeah, if we can get her off. You get her off, bring her back up. Yeah, we've just been advised that um, we have a passenger on this flight. Apparently, her husband, who's at home, is not travelling. She's travelling with one, one other friend. Her husband at home has taken ill, so um, she's got a message, or we're trying to give her a message to ring home. In the meantime, just in case, um, she may decide not to travel because we don't know what the nature of the illness is. We're going to try and locate a bag so we don't cause a big delay. We've just... You know, has, um, has your husband been a bit poorly? He's okay. in respite. Right, well, there's been a message. Can you ring him? What's at the uh, respite and the daughters? Oh, we know. What was the message? Just to ring him at okay, home? To or... ring the daughter. Um, yeah, if you quickly ring your daughter. No. Daughter, which daughter? Do you know which daughter? My daughter from Dark the one in Sheffield. I don't know that one, but that was the only message we got. Whether he stays in. Now, what, what do you think I should do? Then just take me off the plane. What should I do? Yeah, they're in two different bins. Don't think you've got the bags? Well, we haven't got them. We know where they are. Oh. Just one second and I'll make the decision. You won't, you won't know which... With over 300 passengers waiting on the aircraft, Cathy must take action. Right, we know where your bags are, but it's a decision as to whether to take them off or not now. We need to make that decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not rushing. You take your time. You've got enough panic. Hello? Chief Steward BJ is getting ready for a big night out. I've been at the Albert Hall on the last night of the proms and everything else. I feel a big orchestra playing Royal Britannia. You know, last night of the proms. He's off to the Travel Trade Gazette Awards, where Britannia is in the running for top charter airline. It's set to be a glittering occasion. I mean, the salmon's lovely, but it's very dry. So we're waiting for the sauce. It's nice, though. Oh, it's nice. Yeah, don't get me wrong, it's dry. <laughs> we keep having to drink. <laughs> Cheers. Jason and Aaron are saying their Shut farewells. <laughs> That's what you like. I got the bullet. I oh, know. You got kept on then, yeah? No, not over Christmas. Back in February. Oh, that's better than nothing. Isn't it? Yeah. I try and take it as as light-hearted as possible, but there are some people that it's like their, you know, it's their life. They're like, ooh, I love this job, and you know, do it right. Or as I'm more sort of, yeah, let's let's just just get it done. Take chill out. 
I've given up my life for the company. My own problem, I know that. My job has always come first, that's why I'm still single at my age. I've given up boyfriends because of my job. They couldn't put up with my shifts. No, they couldn't put up with them. My job always came first, I'm a single female. Do you reckon it's a go? Because I need to know, because of the whole... I need to know if you're going to go. Oh, I've got to put my shirt on. She said you looked much better to me. She's with a restaurant. I'm going to go then, and I'll ring you from Palmer. I'll ring the, I'll ring the restaurant. At the end of the day, pretend you say, we have got you for your personality, don't change. And as soon as you get online, they want you to change. They want you to be, like, a little Britannia robot. <laughs> Meals, drinks, service. And it's like, I don't... That's what I don't agree with. I do enjoy the job, though, I definitely do. But it's just... I just didn't want to change, and obviously, that's why I'm out. <laughs> well, look, everyone. I hope we bloody win this thing. Decided to go back to hairdressing. He's currently looking for work in Dubai. Jason spent his winter on the dole. He's now back at Britannia for the summer season. Pat has left Britannia but is still pursuing her dream of becoming a stewardess. BJ's promotion to chief steward has been made permanent. And Kathy is now in her 18th year at Manchester Airport. All I've ever known all my life has been aircraft. It's just a way of life for me. I'd be a bird tomorrow if I could. Just about to begin on Channel 4 now, Brookside, but stay with us on UTV for the world's scariest police chases next.